everyone and welcome to this workshop where I'm going to show off the UV unwrap tool within Keyshot. You may have found that for some of your products you need to have a texture or a label that follows the curvature of your complex organic shapes. This is where using the UV unwrap tool within Keyshot can help. At the moment here I have a cloth weave texture applied to this bike saddle and the mapping type is set to box. Here we can see there are seams that are coming across where the texture tiles meet which you probably don't want to see in our final renders. If I now change this mapping type to UV, you can then see how the texture is now being applied to that surface. You can see there are different scales of that texture, there are edges where they don't blend together, and this is probably not the look that we're going after. So this is when you'd use the UV Unwrap tool to help flatten out the 3D model so that 2D texture can be applied seamlessly. Before you start using the UV Unwrap tool, it is best to look at the tessellation quality of the model and see how the polygon shapes are sized and positioned over the surface. Under the Tools drop-down, here I can use the Retessellate option. Using the default settings, I'm just going to click on the Tessellate to see how the polygons are recalculated and positioned over this model. Ideally, what you'd need to have are polygons that are of equal size and orientation across the surface to make it easier to create the UV charts for a smoother texture application. When you are happy with the look of the polygons, you can then select Apply and then Done to close the window down. Now we are ready to unwrap the surface and apply the UV coordinates. So under the Tools drop down, here I can find that UV Unwrap tool. This will then open up the UV Unwrap dialog box, where again I am free to spin around the model and see it from all angles. If this was a simple surface or a continuous flat surface, you may want to use the Quick Unwrap tool to let the software apply the UV coordinates. However, as this is quite a complex organic shape and it's a continuous surface all the way around, I'm going to be using the Advanced Unwrap so I can specify exactly where I want to have the cuts along the surface to help flatten this out. Now when it comes to adding seams in, it is best to add them in where you may not necessarily see them. This is more than likely to be on the underside of the model. If you find this grid is getting in the way, under the Settings option you can toggle the ground grid view off. When you click to add a seam in, all the polygons vertices will appear in blue dots, and you can then start to manipulate and scroll through your model and start selecting the pathway that you want to follow. As you click on the blue dots, a red path will appear to confirm the selections you have made. The red dotted path is where the software thinks you may want to go next. If you are happy with the pathway that Keyshot is showing you, you can just double click on the last blue dot that you selected and it will then put in a continuous pathway. If however you see some discrepancies or it's not going the direction that you want it to be, follow the dotted line and then when you want to make a change, just click on that blue dot to confirm the direction the path should take. One good thing about this tool is that the undo feature does work, so if you do accidentally click the wrong blue dot or the pathway that Keyshot follows is not the one you are after, you can just hit Ctrl Z on your keyboard and revert it back to the stage beforehand. When you've got a continuous seam, you can then hit the green tick to accept those changes. With the flood fill option selected, I'm just going to click on this top surface and I can see that the entire model is still highlighted. That's because it's still seen as one continuous surface. So in this case, I do need to add in a secondary seam so it can split out from the base. Again, I'm going to click on that Add Seam button and start to select the blue vertices on those polygons, showing the software where it needs to cut as well. I can now see if I select those surfaces, the top and the bottom are now separated. For the purpose of this model, I'd also like to create a central part of the bike saddle so it can have a different scale of texture compared to the main seating area. So for this, I'm going to add in a third seam. I now have those three seams in place. With the Flood Fill option still selected, holding down the Shift key, I can select the multiple surfaces. Now to see what effect these seams have already had, I'm going to click on the Unwrap button. With this warning, it's telling me that there are faces that I have not yet selected. So for this particular model, these faces relate to the underside, which I did not select when clicking the individual surfaces. However, I can just click on that Yes, and it will then also select them for me. Here we can then see what the charts look like. 
If I adjust the base UV size, I can make those charts bigger to see how they're wrapping around my model. At this stage, you can see if there are any discrepancies, whether there need to be additional seam lines created, and if there's any stretching that you weren't expected. If you are happy with what you see, you could just hit apply. However, for this model, I can see that the front of this central section, the charts are quite close together, and then they spread out near the back. Now I might want it whether the same distance at the front and back. Also on the main seating area, they're at an angle, and I probably want them to be flowing over the seat rather than the direction they're currently positioned in. This is where adding in direction guides can help. As I mentioned before, undo does work, so I can hit Control Z on my keyboard to go back into creating those different guides. I'll find the direction guide button on the left, and when I click it, those blue vertices show again. I can then click to say the direction I want the U coordinate to be in. These don't have to go the full length of the model, they are just showing the initial direction. So if I click on the surface here and unwrap, change the base size, we can see that the direction guide is controlling the distance of those charts and the sizing of it. At the front here now, they are more uniform, but then as it goes to the back surface, they spread out again. In this case, if I want the charts to be uniform on the back section, as well as the front, I will need to add in a secondary direction guide back here. So I'll just hit undo so I can go back to that direction guide option. I'll select the tool and then click on the blue dots to create the green line. I'm going to show you what it looks like. So here you can see that those charts are more uniform in size. There is still stretching around the hole, but that's probably what you'd expect with these textures anyway, as it does have to bend down. I'm also going to add some direction guides in on the main seating area to change the rotation of this chart. And as it's on a separate surface, I'm actually going to have it going in a different direction to what the initial surface was. So for this one, I'm going to add in three direction guides, and that's just so I can control the uniform charting at the back. One thing also to note is that you always go in the same direction when creating charts. So for this surface, I was going left to right. Otherwise, you could cause confusion with the software about which way the U-coordinate is going on that surface. Selecting the surface under that flood fill, I can click on Unwrap, and I can see what the charts are now doing. Now, when it comes to the base UV size of the chart, this will affect every chart that is on here. And ideally, you'd have it the same length as your model, because then this would mean that one single chart covers the whole part, and that is then linked to a one-to-one -one scale to your label or texture. However, with the texture I'm currently using, that cloth weave, this is a repeatable texture, so I can get away with having more than one chart within there. I would, however, still recommend making sure that a complete chart is within place. These charts go from A to J, and on this model, I can see that the first part of A is here, and at the back, it doesn't quite meet J. So I could extend this, uh, to make sure that all the charts are in place. If you roughly know what numbers you want to type in for the sizing, you can do that in here as well. Now for this middle section, I actually wanted the scale of this chart to be a quarter of the scale of the main seating area. So to change that one, you simply click on that region, and then in the scale option, we can change this from one to 0.25. You will see a slight adjustment of the other charts, and that is just so it can calculate the seams in between each surface. I'm also able to rotate the charts around if I wanted them to be, so they are all in the same direction. Again, just gonna do one final check to make sure that there are no stretching areas that I wasn't expecting, or any seams that I hadn't put in there. When you are happy with what you see, you can then hit apply, and then you can see how it has initially affected that texture. I can edit this texture and I can change the width in the UV options to reduce it down and I can see how it affects both regions. Looking around the model, I can see that those textures are going over the edges. I can't see any unexpected cut lines and that is mainly because my seams are on the underside of the model. The only change that I see is on that central part where I specified the scale would be different. And that's how you can use the UV tool to create a smoother, seamless texture over your models, as well as adjust the scale of that texture over the same part. Thank you for listening.